out and work on yourself and reevaluate yourself and connect back to yourself. And I don't think she did that. So let me ask you this, Fifi. Why do you think that sometimes we feel that if we, we failed in the first marriage, now we have to get it right in the following marriage? Where does that that pressure where does that pressure or thought that pressure come from do you think it comes from society it family from, is it self-induced or self-validation pressure come, we put it, on ourselves it can come from family it can come from our friends you know how people talk and that's another thing that's why you don't let people on the outside looking in get involved in your relationships mm -hmm. that's why that your your relationship should be fireproof nothing should be able to come past that so when you start to let people get in your ear the pressure of people talking to you validation you wanting what somebody else have you see another married couple not knowing how their marriage is but you want what they got you know we always want what somebody else got everything that glitter ain't gold y'all and that's why they say comparison is the thief of joy say it again comparison is the thief of joy so coveting I'm, coveting what somebody else has and you don't even know what they going through behind closed like doors how they got what they got or what they putting up with to get what they got and so, she and that's the thing that she needed to keep in mind with steve and marjorie she don't know what steve and marjorie going through mm -hmm, behind closed doors mm -hmm. so she probably felt all of that she felt like i had to get it right this time you know and then another thing ernesto don't think ernesto didn't study his prey i didn't know where shirley's background oh, he sure. knew shirley came from a marriage like that and he knew she was looking for somebody to protect her mm -hmm. okay now, he couldn't necessarily provide for her legitly, but he found ways to do it. That's why he locked up, allegedly. Mm -hmm. He found ways to do it. So, he wasn't necessarily a protector and a provider, legitly, but he found ways to provide. Because we know she got that nice ring and that nice G-Wagon that she liked to put her nice clothes on and just ride around in. So he was protecting and providing, he was doing it the street way. The street way. The only way he knew how to do it. Okay, so let's talk about, let's unpack that a little bit more. Do you feel like, do you think as a society, we put too much pressure on men to be protectors and, and providers? And so therefore, that's why they feel like sometimes they may have to resort to illegal activities. Because remember, side note, you know, we, anybody who watched The, the Shy on Showtime, um, it's a really good show, The Shy. And one of the characters on The Shy, I'm going on a tangent, but stay with me, y'all. He was locked up for like 10 mm. to over 10 years 10 20 years mm -hmm. and he just recently got out of a prison mm -hmm. he met a nice young lady mm -hmm. they started dating he moved in with her mm -hmm. but as their relationship is progressing he's starting to feel more stress because he is a convicted felon and he's having a hard time finding employment and especially finding employment that pays him a decent wage and so throughout the show his character is really struggling with trying to avoid going back to his street lifestyle a life of crime because he obviously doesn't want to go back to jail but he's having a hard time trying to get a job because he's a convicted felon and nobody will take a chance on him and so he feels that pressure to to be that protector and that provider and he feels like because he can't provide you know it's messing up with his manhood so do you think as as society we're sending the wrong message to men that if they don't have money they're less of a man or is that why they feel the pressure to go out and scam and do things some men 